Remember the category, popular 1960s TV shows. You know the rules. We paint, you guess, and I'll give you a few clues along the way. A lot of times the clues are needed along with the picture. These robots are not the best painters every time. Now this first one, this show features a quirky family that delights in the macabre. Their house is filled with bizarre and supernatural items. Anybody remember this one? Going all the way back to the 1960s. The theme song is so iconic for its finger-snapping tune. Who knows this one? There it is. Jan has it. You guys remember this? I remember really looking forward to watching this show. Hey, Anna, how's it going? Good to see you. The gang's all here. Who remembers this now? Jan, you got it. Do you remember this one, Anna? Oh, there you go. Adam's family. Of course. It is the Adam's family. All right. On to the next one. Now, this one's pretty easy. This one's set in the future. This series explores the galaxy. 1960s. The crew travels on a starship with the mission of peaceful exploration. The phrase, beam me up, Scotty, is famously misattributed to this show. Not Star Wars. Not Star Wars. Not Star Trek. Oh, no, I guess that's Star Trek. Star Trek. Star Trek. T-R-E-K. Is the correct answer. Spock. Bones. All right, you guys will get this next one pretty easy, too. We're going to make up for it on the second. These are pretty easy. Each episode is a standalone story with a surprising twist. The series delves into genres like science fiction, suspense, and the supernatural. Hey, Brad, what's up? See you in a week. Okay, who's got this? Who knows this one? From the 1960s. You missed it, Brad. This is the 1960s popular TV shows. That is correct. And who remembers this gentleman's name? No cicadas yet. Any day now. Any day now. No cicadas. The eerie theme music is often associated with bizarre, surreal moments. <laughs> anyway, Twilight Zone is indeed correct. Who remembers the other one that was similar? Outer Limits. Outer Limits. Yes, Rod Serling is the correct gentleman. <laughs> the main character can grant almost any wish. 1960s. The protagonist is a 2,000-year-old genie. You guys remember the show? How about some? Let's hear you name some other characters from this show. That is correct. Brett has it. And do you remember the buddy's name? I dream of genie is the proper. I dream of genie is the proper name. <laughs> How about the doc? The doctor. 
the the boss that was the, the doctor. Anybody remember his name? Dr. Bellows. Dr. Bellows. <laughs> Correct. All right, next one. The setting is a PT boat in World War II. The crew is a ragtag bunch of misfits. The series is a comedic take on naval life during the war. I don't know. I don't know if I remember this the first run or if I was only watching reruns when I used to watch this. Brad has it. Brad's going to get all these. Um, yeah, these were when we were kids. This is definitely. Uh, but I, I remember watching it. But but we were we already watching reruns. And who else will start in this? Does it, do you guys remember any of the other uh, co-stars on this? Was that wasn't Tim Conway in this? Wasn't Tim Conway in this? I'm thinking he was. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. Anyway, but Kale's Navy is indeed the correct answer. Ernest Borg Nine. Ernest Borg Nine. All right, you guys will get this one. This is one of my favorites out there. And I watched a lot of reruns of this one, I think. A poor family suddenly becomes rich. They moved to California after discovering oil. The family struggles to fit in with high society. The cement pond. You remember the cement pond? <laughs> Jeff Pro. Pretty funny show. And how about the banker? You guys remember the banker? Who knows the banker's name? The banker's name. They all kind of had that same kind of cast. But they had the stuffy boss banker in this case. Beverly Hillbillies is, of course, the correct answer. Everybody remembers the beginning with the... Uh, truck with granny stacked on top. Anyway, here we go. Go back a little further. Now, this is early 60s, as I recall. I did watch this. A young boy who frequently gets in trouble. His neighbor has the same name as Brad's former dog. He often bears the brunt of his antics. Based on a popular comic strip of the same name. <laughs> Mr. Wilson. Didn't you have a dog named Wilson? Didn't you have a dog named Wilson? Mr. Wilson. Anyway, Dennis the Menace, of course. Now this is, yeah, this was way back. I don't even think there ever were color versions of this one. <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah, and I watched a lot of the reruns on this one. Set in a POW camp during World War II. I should give it away. The prisoners often outsmart their captors. The lead character is a crafty American colonel. Brad's got it. You need to look up, like, Anna, you need to look up, like, the list of the 20 top TV shows from the 60s, and then you could beat Brad. Yeah, Bob Crane. Bob Crane. There was some crazy thing about when Bob Crane died, right? There was, there was some mystery. Or something. Anybody remember that? 
<clears throat> anyway, Hogan's Heroes. Hogan's Heroes. Colonel Clink. Colonel Clink. I know nothing. Nothing. All right, here we go. Now, their favorite. Surprised they haven't made a bunch of movies of these. A family of friendly monsters trying to live a normal life. They live at 1313 Mockingbird Lane. <laughs> the head of the family is a Frankenstein like character. That is correct. The monsters, you guys remember the monsters? So, like the the one like niece or something was normal, right? <laughs> Just a normal girl, and the rest of the family were all like freaks. I think it was kind of a copy of Adam's family, if I'm not mistaken, but I'm not sure. The monsters is indeed correct. That is correct. Grandpa. There they are. <laughs> Eddie. Wasn't his name Eddie? I think his name was Eddie. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Now, we've done this one before in another. This was in the 1970s as well. So there's a clue. A police procedural set in an island state. A police procedural procedural set in an island state. Chat GPT gave me a little tongue twister there. <clears throat> the main character is Detective Steve McGarrett. There you go. I see the correct answer, Susan. The show is known for its catchphrase, which is Who's got it? Book them, Dano. Book them, Dano. That's correct. That's correct. It had a great uh, sequence at the beginning, right? With the wave and the music. Yeah. All right, moving on. 1960s TV shows. This one. Can't really tell yet. But it's a realistic portrayal of the daily lives of two police officers. I don't know if you remember, but this was one of the first ones of this type of show. The series covers various aspects of police work in Los Angeles. You guys remember the name of this? Do you remember the name of the police show? Chips is incorrect. This preceded Chips. Preceded Chips. The title refers to the patrol unit assigned to the main characters. There it is. Susan's got it. Susan's got it. One out of 12. One out of 12. A 420 in progress. Grant's house. Out of 12 is the correct answer. And then what, uh, before that even was Dragnet, right? And I don't have Dragnet in here, which Dragnet would have been a good one. Okay, next up. I'll see if you remember this. Involves high stakes covert operations. The team uses disguises and advanced technology to complete missions. <laughs> Known for the line, this tape will self destruct in five seconds. Correct. Does everybody remember that this was a series before it became movies? Much like Star Trek and many others. 
older TV series turned into newer movies. Mission Impossible. When Tom Cruise was just a little guy. He's still a little guy, but he was even littler then. <laughs> All right, so here we go. This is a definite favorite. Susan knows this one. A blended family navigates daily life together. The family consists of six children, three boys and three girls. The dad was an architect. Known for its iconic multi-frame opening sequence. I guess that's true. That was rather iconic, wasn't it? Brad has it. It's not the best picture, Mr. Robot. I think he could, the robot could do better. The robot could definitely do better. Father Ward. Father Ward. That's a different show where the father is, is named Ward. But oh, I had the girl. What was the name of that show? <laughs> yeah this is the brady bunch this is the brady bunch of course florence henderson <laughs> yeah the father's name was ward in some show i don't remember which one. Oh, in 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 leave it to be right ward yes all right, you guys should get this one right away. A group of castaways on an uncharted island. They were shipwrecked during a three-hour tour. A three-hour tour. It was only a three-hour tour. This is the one I remember as a kid trying to identify with it. That would be kind of fun getting shipwrecked. <laughs> three-hour tour. The island looked like fun, right? Professor Anne Marianne. <laughs> of course, of course, you've got, all got it correct. Robots are doing its best to uh, draw Bob Denver. Bob Denver is his name. Anybody remember any other actors' names from Gilligan's Island? Gilligan's Island is correct. All right, next one might be a little hard. We got some new music tonight. You guys notice that? Got some new background. Tina Louise is correct. The main character is a defense lawyer who never loses. Never. This is based on novels by Earl Stanley Gardner. Earl Stanley Gardner. Ironsides is a good guess. Ironsides came later. This is pre, this was like the one that set up Ironside. They decided after this one had been so successful for so long, they had to do Ironside. <laughs> there you go. You got it down. Yeah. This was a pretty good one. I actually, I know it was in reruns, but I would go back and watch some of these because they were somewhat interesting, the, the cases and stuff, right? Perry Mason is the correct answer. Perry Mason. Remember the, the his opponent always? He was the same guy. All right, here's a good one. Susan, let's see if you can get this one. Set at the Shady Rest Hotel, which is accessed by a steam-powered train. The hotel is run by Kate Bradley with her three daughters. It's known for the water tower in the opening credits. Yes, it was. <laughs> it was definitely known. I think I used to look forward to this just to just to catch the beginning. <laughs> See the girl's shoulders over the top of the, the water barrel. 
fade in place. No, it's not fade in place. You guys remember the name of this, right? And there were a bunch of spinoffs of this. Family Affair, no. No, not Family Affair. That would have been a good one to have on here, but I do not have Family Affair. Petticoat Junction. I can't believe you guys were stumped by that one. Petticoat Junction. Okay, let's go back a little further now. Jan, this one's up your alley. A widower raises his three boys with help of his father-in-law. The show often explores themes of family and growing up. The family's surname is Douglas. Douglas. Good try, Brad. <laughs> that's that's what it would be now, right? The new version would be my three dads. <laughs> okay, Susan, it's got. I'm not sure how the three dads it works out, but it's some woke thing, right? Don't know. <laughs> yeah, my three sons. Anybody remember the actors' names or the characters' names even? It's hard to remember any of it. And it just goes in and out. <laughs> okay, we got a few more. Just a few more. Okay, here we go. This one's a spinoff of Petticoat Junction. A couple moves from New York City to a country farm. A little bit like me. The comedy arises from the husband's enthusiasm versus the wife's reluctance. Comedy ensues. That's correct. You guys have this one. Fred McMurray was, was a, the right answer back on the last one. Who knows the actor's names on this one? You got the show name. You got the show name. Who knows the actor's names? Actor's names. Eddie, Eddie, Eddie something. Eddie something. And then this is uh, Ava Gabor. Ava, wasn't it Ava Gabor? Uh, Jaja Gabor? Isn't this Ava? Who knows? Ava or Jaja? I think it was Ava, wasn't it? I don't know. We'll go by whatever you guys vote. Green Acres, spinoff of Petticoat Junction. All right, here we go. Next one, the wife has magical powers, which she often uses to solve family dilemmas. I didn't remember it solving any dilemmas. Seems like it caused dilemmas. Her husband works in advertising. And prefers a normal, quiet life. This was the role model for Mad Men, right? <laughs> Somebody was watching this, and smoking some marijuana, and uh, came up with the TV show Mad Men. The wife's mother was named Indora, and she disapproved of her father, or of her daughter's mortal husband. Okay, there's all the answers. Bewitch, Tabitha, Darren, Samantha. How about the, the identical twin sister? Who remembers her sister's name? Indora was mean, huh? Yeah. Mother in law. Was... You guys remember the, her sister? She was the bad witch or the sneaky witch? Sabrina? Sabrina? All right, number 20 set on the Blank Ranch in Nevada. The series revolves around the Cartwright family. Known for its Western themes and the patriarch, Ben Cartwright. Definitely the prototypical patriarch. <laughs> there ever was one. Little Joe, that's right, Haas. Us and the black sheep, Adam. Adam, I think it's the black sheep. There was something about Adam, a different mother, or something. I don't know what it was. 
Not Gunsmoke. Uh, Gunsmoke was even previous, though. Gunsmoke was in the 60s some, but Gunsmoke was even in the 50s, right? And Gunsmoke was a pretty good show. I'd like to go back and watch some of these Gunsmoke. Yeah, what was the cook's name? He was Chinese, right? The cook. Hop Singh? Hop Singh? Hop Singh? Does that sound right? Bonanza. All right, we got uh, three more in here. I crammed them all in. This one focuses on the adventures of a young boy and his friends. I think I identified with this one. The main character often finds himself in trouble or misunderstood. And I definitely vividly remember the opening sequence, right? Is him climbing up on a sign or something and falling into the teacup or whatever it is that's burning. It's like, oh my God. I think I had bad dreams about that. The main character of, of Often finds himself in trouble. The series portrays an idealized version of American family life. And the father's name was Ward, if I'm not mistaken. And the, the mother would always, now Ward, now Ward. Now Ward, the beaver didn't mean it. The beaver, it wasn't his fault. <laughs> and the brother's name? Who knows the brother's name? Yeah, uh, the beavers, there, there's the beaver. And I'm kind of hiding Ward. And Wally, right? Wally. Oh, was that the friend? No, I think Wally was the beaver. All right, you'll get this one. A sketch comedy show that includes rapid fire jokes and gags. Famous for its colorful psychedelic style. Popularized phrases like suck it to me and featured a recurring joke wall. <laughs> uh, I definitely look forward to this show every week. I know that. I think everybody did. Ronan Martins. Ronan and Martins. Yeah, there you go. Ronan and Martins laugh in. Indeed, now. <laughs> Quick rapid fire. Let's let's hear some names. Billy Hahn, that's a good one. Who else was on that show? Everybody was on that show. Everybody that was a comedian at the time was on that show. Artie Johnson. Gilda Red. Ruth Buzzy. Okay, last one. Set in a fictional town of Mayberry, the series follows the life of a widowed sheriff. It's known for its wholesome, down-to-earth humor and life lessons. I think Pete used to watch this all the time. Where's Pete? <laughs> like I remember going to Pete's house and watching this. <laughs> That's correct. That's correct. You remember they were all on it. Don Knotts and uh, who's the guy in the upper right? Who knows? Who knows the guy in the upper right? Barney, sure. I'm not to Barney with me. <clears throat> Who's the guy on the upper right? The actor. Oh, Jim Nick. There you go. And what was his show called that was a spinoff of this? Got a successful show for a while. <laughs> Gary Grant knew him. Yeah, I think so. I think that's true. <laughs> Gomer Pyle is what I was looking for there. Anyway, okay, we made it through that round. You guys did awfully well on that stuff.